Well, I know most of you have heard by now, oh, you know, Justice Smollett, you know, she was convicted, you know, last week or so, you know, in his, you know, hoax that, that he pulled. And a lot of people, you know, had a lot of things to say during that time, especially the LGBT community. I'm, I'm going to get on to them, too, in this story because, um, you know, we, 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 uh, the finesse happened with that situation once again. And I definitely need to address that. So, you know, what happened, the Chicago police chief at the time, his name was Eddie Johnson. The, he was the one who arrested Justice Smollett for staging the attack on himself. He said Friday that he would have let Justice Smollett go if he would just apologized and admitted he was lying early on. Now, you remember back in that time period when Justin came out with this story, he gonna say he went out at two o'clock in the morning when it's supposed to be cold in Chicago to go to Subway. And Justin said that just, just some, some random, you know, MAGA white folks just pop up out of nowhere and, and say, you must be that N word and, you know, a gay slur uh, from empire. Like, MAGA people will watch empire and definitely be recognizing him like that. Okay. Then he ended up talking about how they roughed him up, put a, put a noose around his neck, pour with bleach on him or whatever. And <laughs> I mean, this crazy story, it doesn't even make sense. Right. But Eddie Johnson, you know, he, he said that it, 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 once he was found out and he, and, and listen, just, you know, he lied. He know he lied. He shouldn't have done that. You should have known better, especially they got cameras all over the place. You're not Karen. Karen gets away with filing false reports in which they shouldn't be getting away with that. Now he came in later and say, I want people to understand this. This was not, he said the most heinous crime of the century. This was what he said. He said he didn't kill anybody. Then it's true. Jesse didn't kill anybody. He didn't blow up a building. That's, that's what, you know, uh, Eddie Johnson has said. Letting people know, okay, yes, we know he lied, but come on now. He didn't kill nobody. And basically what he's saying is y'all folks in the white media, you sitting up here acting like this man and did that. He did not do that. So, so stop with the crap. They said he continued to say we would have been more happy uh, with just an apology at the end of, of, of it all. than we uncovered, but for some reason he just wanted to keep going down this road that he was actually a victim. And I don't understand why he did that. So, you know, you know, he, he, he found out real quick that he black and not LGBT because, you know, I've had some people that, you know, even made video responses to me say, Oh, well, see, this is why uh, black people in the LGBT community say they LGBT before they black, because black people don't do this and black people don't do that. And let me tell you something. It doesn't matter about what you do in your bedroom. Cause some of them don't like when we say that, but it don't matter. It's your business. It only matters to the people that you're doing whatever you're doing with. Just like it's, it's nobody's business or it doesn't matter. Nobody what I do. It doesn't, it's nobody's business and it doesn't matter. I know no matter what, I'm a black man in America and throughout the world. And if you a black man, LGBT black woman, you are black first. And you find out the hard way which just, he's finding out the hard way that you're not caring. You, you're not Brad. You can't just lie like that and get away with it. Understand? So Jesse was found guilty of thir uh, uh, Thursday of five counts of felony disorderly conduct for filing a false police report claiming that he'd been jumped by a pair of racist and homophobic attackers. And this was in January, 2019. Now, while on the case, Johnson, who was later fired himself from his conduct in 2019 after he was found drunk in a park patrol car is it said he quickly uh, knew is that small was lying about being brutalized. Said the former top cop said in a video showing the actor with a noose hanging around his neck at his home long after the crime was committed was the first red flag. He said, I have to be honest. When I first saw the video of him in his apartment with the noose around his neck, I was concerned because I don't think there's many black people in America with a noose around their neck and would immediately take it off. 
You say who is you know you say it. I mean yeah, because it just didn't, didn't make sense. He said by the way he was no he was nonchalant handling it, giving it you know giving me cause for concern. He said but I would not let the police department make him an offender until the evidence just got to be so overwhelming. Now he added, say to use a symbol like a noose to promote yourself is just unconscionable to me. They said another suspicious sign that was small a subway tuna sandwich. They say, which he told cops he'd been walking home with at the time of the attack was still in good shape after the supposed beating. He said he comes back, gets attacked in a supposed hate crime. And during all this scuffle, they poured bleach on him. And when he got up, he went to his apartment. He got up and still had that subway sandwich with him. He said, that doesn't happen. He said, people get attacked like that. Well, belongings they have out there, they usually leave it until the police uh, can go back with them because they are afraid. Now he said, this guy had the sandwich in his hand and it was never been touched. He said, that was a real tipping point, you know, to us that something was amiss. Now Johnson also said police and then, um, white supremacist mayor Rahm Emanuel got fired up about the case because Smollett stained out city and wasted police manpower. But he said he still made it a point to treat Smollett like a victim until the evidence was undeniable. Now I say, as the days went on, they say we started recovering that video. It became fairly obvious that something was wrong. And so they said the tipping point also when they arrested and interviewed the brothers as a Ambi Bola and Abel is a Osendario. It said, who said small a had paid them to, to fake beat him up. It said, we arrested them and brought them in. And when I saw the videos of their statements, then I could no longer protect small a. So this is the thing, you know, he paid these, you know, Nigerians $3,500. Once again, yes, Jesse lied. I don't like that. He said it was a hate crime because there are some true hate crimes happening or could happen. Let's say in Chicago, and then they are gonna bring up Jesse. But let me say something else. Justice Smollett, even though I don't agree with what he did, he's not the poster child of lying. Okay, lying and causing a problem. You have to understand there are just recent cases of these freaking Karens lying on brothers. One black man recently just got out of prison. His Karen lied on him and got him put in jail. I think what twenty five years, saying that he violated her. Right. For and then another brother, Kevin Strickland was another one that got just recently got out, you know, lying on the brothers all the time, getting to convict them of crimes. They did not commit. Karen has caused racist mobs to go burn down black, you know, buildings and towns and lynch black people and torch black, torture black people off of freaking lives. Look at the Emmett Till situation with that Carolyn Bryant female. I mean, she definitely, uh, her lineage be cursed for the rest of the rest of their life. Right. But so we're not going to put Jesse as the poster child of lying, you know, even though I disagree with what he did, but it's another portion of this. We want to cover too. You remember when all this, you know, stuff came out about Jesse and you remember all those LGBT liberal groups, ready to come out and get a bag. You remember that? And you notice they are so quick to come out to, to, to get a bag when something happens to black folks, the George Floyd. Now the black lives matter global network foundation got $90 million. Where's that money? Where is it? And these black lives matter people all tied in with the LGBT. Every, then you start breaking down where the money went and everything went to, you know, trans this and, 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 and gay that and lesbian this, it went to nothing but LGBT groups. They getting bags off of the death of black folks. And then the situation here with Justice Smollett, all these LGBT groups came out. Oh, you need to donate because it, it's a rise of homophobia. Donate, donate, donate. Well, let me ask them LGBT groups something that took in all that money. Since it's been proven that Jesse lied and it was not a, LGBT uh, attack. So that means you should be returning the donations to all those people that donated to your organizations because you raise money in the name of Justice Smollett and attacks on gay people. And that did not happen. Now we both know all of us know that they're not going to return that money. Please. They are allowed to grift to, to hustle to steal money 
constantly. And y'all, y'all got to see the hustle, but, but let a black person get a freaking PPP loan and they didn't have their paperwork, right? Oh, they getting charged. But these so-called nonprofits could f- take in money on false pretenses. Cause it was false pretenses. Right. And they're not made to give the, the money back. You know, that money gone. Like I said, I've been seeing that every time something happened to black folk, here come these, these white folks showing up, hustling and grifting calling their organizations black justice for this find a front person sometime, a black face, but then it's corporate, you know, white America collecting the bag. They'll get it, the Negro a little paycheck, you know, make make their life, you know, a little better or whatever, but they grift it. And this is why I say, if you're going to donate money, donate directly to the people who's out there doing the work. Don't ever give money to no organization. Find out that person's cash app. Find out that person's a uh, Zelle. Find out that person's PayPal, Venmo. Shoot, they got a mailing address or something. F- send something that way. Don't give it to no organization unless you know that organization is thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly owned and controlled by black people. You understand know what I'm saying? Because we we as a community got to stop the grift. Because that ninety million dollars should have went to the black community with, with, with George. I'm sorry, yeah, with George Floyd. It should have went to the black community, and it didn't. All the hustling they did on with Jesse, they're supposed to go to the black community, right? Because he said racist and homophobia. You didn't, so you didn't get that money up. So, so we as a community got to start pointing out these people. The moment they show up, talking about donate, we need to name and shame. And I've told y'all this before. Name and shame works. Them, them folks cannot stand to be named and to be shamed. They will, they will quit doing things. They will return money and everything else when you name and shame. So next time something come up and we see these organizations pop up that we never heard of before, or these black folks that we never seen before. That's when the moment we get suspicious, it's like, okay, who are you? We have never heard you in all these years. And all of a sudden, and see the white supremacy is so, it's so dumb. Like it would be better for you to try to get somebody that's already on the scene that people know you literally bringing in nobodies. You're putting them on uh, your white media platforms and talking about, look, that's look, this is a new black leader. This is the new black press. You know, they'll say something like that, right? This is the new civil rights leaders of the day. No, they're not because we don't know them. And anybody that's on this space, they don't want to be called no civil rights leader. You are a brother or sister in the fight. That's all. That's what you are. You're not no leader. The code is the leader, not a person. Because when you put that name leader on somebody, you put a target on their back that shouldn't even be there because it should be the code. Because see, when you have the, when the code's the leader, if you take out one, that so-called leader, And if you had a code, nothing changes. Actually, you make them more zealous about getting the work done when you put a hand on the leader. So nobody wants to be a leader and you shouldn't be other than maybe leading your family, leading your company that you may have, or maybe you got a group together that you may want to do that. But the greater, no, uh -uh. no, I'm the black leader. No but I believe they should be made to return that money back to all donors. Don't you think? I mean, if any of y'all that donated money to them people, I think you should ask for your money, money back. Ask for your donation because obviously it wasn't, it wasn't true. Right. But once again, we're not going to make Jesse the poster child of of lying because he's not, he's not. Um, what I think should happen to Jesse personally, just my opinion. I think Jesse should just go home. I think Jesse should get uh, maybe uh, a fine community service. And that's it. Cause then, I mean, he likes it once again, he didn't kill nobody. He didn't kill nobody. He didn't harm nobody. Anything he harmed was his own reputation. He, of course in Hollywood, he's done. Maybe the only thing he'll be able to get from now on is maybe something from Tyler Perry. Maybe, maybe he'll they'll put him on. What's that show? Sisters. Cause you know, Tyler Perry will be having some interesting characters on that show sisters. So maybe he can put him on that. If you want to give him, give him a job, you know, Tyler Perry got his own studio. So he definitely can put him to work, but 
No, nah, we, 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 I'm not going to go down that route with, with, with Jesse. Nope. Not condemning him as a liar of America. Karen is still the liar of America. Brad is still the liar of America. Jesse can't lie enough to be a liar of America. And like I said, I don't like what Jesse did, but I told y'all I am always going to be, when it comes to certain things, I'm going to always have to be on code with things. And, and, and the code says to never condemn a black person like they did something so egregious when you got these white supremacists that's lying every freaking day and, and got the mass grades to prove it. Just ain't caused no, no mass terrorism or nothing. So I, so I have to say, uh, no, uh, uh-uh. Jesse need to go home. Je- Jesse, Jesse maybe had, a, you know, I, you had people check Jesse's mental health. Maybe he had a mental health episode. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, you know, he just seen some things and we need to check his, his mental health. Did anybody decide to check his mental health? Why, why when black people do something, we can't check mental health. It goes out the window. Maybe something's wrong with Jesse. Maybe he, you know, he has some sort of schizophrenia. I mean, maybe he suffered schizophrenia. You know, I don't know what, what he's suffering. Right. But it, but it could be mental illness. How, how can a Hollywood actor on a major show just come up with something like this? It had to be some sort of trauma or something. I really think that he just needs some psychological help. He need to pay a fine, right? And maybe some community service, you know, make it, make him, um, you know, clean, clean the roads and paint and stuff like that, you know, and, um, and he won't do it no more. And that, that's about it. You know, Cause I think you overcharged him to a felony, a felony for real, a felony. How is that a felony? A felony is for people that like hurt people. Just didn't hurt nobody. But y'all let me know what you think, you know, about this particular story, you know, about the grifting, you know, from these, these white organizations and how we need to name and shame and call them out. Every time we see them showing up on the scene, we need to call out their Negroes that work for them. And we, and we're going to make sure to keep the, you know, eyes on Karen because Karen is the liar. Brad is a liar. And it's your first time coming over. Thank you for joining us here on the Philip Scott audio experience. We appreciate you coming over. Make sure to subscribe. If you subscribe, you'll check it. You'll be able to catch our podcast every single time that we put one out. And if you enjoy the show, make sure you hit us, you know, with a donation on the cash app. We greatly appreciate that. Uh, it helps us keep the light on and, you know, take care of our people at behind the scenes that, you know, we have to pay to keep the show going, which is our editors and graphic designers and other journalists and other people that, in administration that do things for us like business management, uh, you know, CPA, there's different things that we have going on. Right. So understand when you donate, it definitely goes into uh, good hands and we can spread it within the community. So thank you for listening, ladies and gentlemen, and see you next time. Thank you.